Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to do a tag by the wonderful uh, Jennifer Loves Books and she is just, she's really good fun, um, relatively new, really exciting ideas and I, I love the way that she approaches books and the way she talks about them, the way she thinks about them. Um, and this original tag of hers I just think is brilliant. It combines uh, two of my favourite things, one of them obviously being books, the other being incredibly cheesy music. So <laughs> we're already off to a good start and I realise I'm sort of wearing possibly the world's wrinkliest seeming uh, outfit as well as we go. So wonderful. It's also a little, I, I'm going to take this as a sort of vague 80s throwback um, and claim that that's the reason for this because it works quite nicely with this, the Stock Aitken and Waterman tag. And so Stock, Ait uh, Stock Aitken and Waterman were kind of music producers and sort of songwriters um, who sort of like churned out so many of the sort of big hits, particularly of the sort of 80s and 90s, particularly um, in the UK. And this is just so much fun and I'm really, really excited about this. Um, and I will also now have all of these songs in my head for the rest of the day. So uh, let's get started. Uh, we start with this, the playlist instead of prompts, which I really like. Um, and the first is uh, You'll Never Stop Me From Loving You by Sonia. Um, and this is a prompt all about an author whose books you will automatically read, even though some of their books maybe haven't always lived up to your expectations. Um, so an author, I think I've sort of said a few times before, but an author whose books I almost always will go out and find um, if, if they, as soon as they kind of come out. Um, is uh, is Jan Martel. Um, I absolutely love him. Um, Life of Pi was my sort of gateway drug <laughs> and I then went and read absolutely everything else by him and adored it. Um, I just think he's just got such a wonderful, magical, playful way with words and with images and often um, the stories will seem quite sort of surface level sort of magical and sort of fantastical at first and then suddenly there's something quite brutal or quite powerful going on in the background so he's an author who i almost always just want to go out and read uh, but there are a few authors who i've sort of been checking out recently who um i've sort of i have kind of quite strong uh love for and will sort of go out and and, and read quite a lot of as well but they're relatively smaller um or sort of newer authors so people like sarah moss um uh, I'm also sort of working through the backlist of quite a few older authors, um, such as Penelope Fitzgerald as well. So uh, they're not new. It's not like a new book will come out. But if I see something else by them that I haven't read before, I'm very likely to go and pick them up. Next, uh, You Spin Me Round by Dead or Alive. Um, and so this prompt is about a book with so many twists and turns that you get dizzy. Um, this for me has to be Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. Um, I loved this. It's a sort of a gay thriller. Uh, set in a bathhouse, hence the name, um, and uh, or sort of set around one, and it's so cleverly done in my mind. I mean, I don't often read thrillers; it's just not sort of something that I necessarily I necessarily find myself picking up that much. But this book really interested me in the way that it loops in a kind of you know how it creates a bathhouse as a, as an area that is sort of very sort of psychosexual it's kind of it's a place of intense desire and yearning but also a place of potential danger and i think that this book plays with that really cleverly particularly the the danger of what it means to be um a gay man or, or somebody going to something like a bathhouse um and how those sorts of things interact and particularly the sort of uh, fetishization of things like um, violence and, and things like that. So this book does a lot in a really um, clever way, but also towards the end with the twists, it just becomes sort of like, sorry, what? <laughs> like kind of proper like uh, sort of breakneck moments of like, sorry, have, what? <laughs> and I know that's what a thrill is meant to do. I know that's not particularly groundbreaking, but this book I think manages them really, really cleverly in a way that just feels like it's um, uh, yeah, really sensitively and really cleverly handled. Uh, the next is Too Many Broken Hearts by Jason Donovan um, and this is a book that broke your heart and um, what I'm going to do for this is maybe choose the first book that actually made me cry, at least as an adult. I don't know if I cried a lot at books when I was a kid. Maybe I did. Maybe I blanked out all of those memories and repressed them. Um, but I often find that, you know, I, I find it really hard to cry at books. I cry apparently in so many other parts of my life, <laughs> but I find it really hard to cry at books. I don't know what it is. I think there's something about um, the fact that I there's that sort of extra level of distance with a sort of page maybe that makes it harder for me. But the book that made me cry was Two Boys Kissing by David uh, Leverton. Um, and this book was just, ugh, it's just, basically it, it sort of, it is just sort of about these two 
from what from memory, this has been a long time. Uh, these two boys who are kind of part of like a kissathon or, or whatever, and it's kind of part, and it's sort of like a school setting or, or something like that. And um, there's just this really poignant scene towards the end, um, and this isn't a spoiler, but where as they are kissing, um, there is this sort of almost sort of swimming through memories kind of moment that basically loops together um, sort of people fighting for queer liberation um, to the current moment. And it's so beautifully and sensitively done that I just started weeping because it, it's it sort of suddenly brings in, you know, sort of like the AIDS crisis and sort of various other moments in sort of queer history that have led up to this moment of these two boys kissing. And it's so, so beautifully done that I was just, yeah, I, I, I just sort of just sat there weeping at it. And I was like, this book is breaking me ever so slightly, but it is beautiful and it's really well done. Um, and yeah, I just think it's, it's a, an excellent little book. Next up, uh, the fourth prompt, Love in the First Degree by Banana Rama, which is a, a tune. Uh, <laughs> and um, your favourite fictional couple. And I had to think quite hard about this because I keep on thinking, yes, yeah, th that couple. I'm like, no, they, they, they die. <laughs> or like, oh yeah, no, they actually were a pretty bad couple. Or it's actually very one-sided. And so I actually found it really hard to think uh, back over couples who I've really enjoyed. Um, in books, but there are so, so many beautiful ones. I think, um, for me, it's, it has to kind of always, almost always be, uh, Lyra and, uh, I think, is it Daniel? Oh gosh, how have I forgotten his name now? Uh, from the Golden, uh, the, the His Dark Materials trilogy, um, because it's so poignantly done and the way it explores sort of young first love, but then, um, the kind of screeching to a halt almost of that, later in life it's just it's really heartbreaking and really powerfully done and i just i absolutely love this book in the, the series anyway but that that relationship at the heart of it just really cemented it and it, and it's something that they follow up with later books you know in the in the sort of um book of dust series um where she's still lyra's still thinking about this relationship and it's 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 so well done and i, I love it next up is I Should Be So Lucky by Kylie Minogue. Uh, again, a great song. Um, and uh, this uh, is a, a prompt for a book by an Irish author. And I, this is hard for me because a lot of the books that I love, a lot of the, the authors I love um, are Irish or sort of about Ireland. Um, but I would, I'll probably have to limit, I'll, I'll limit myself to three. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first is uh, The Blackwater Lightship by Colm Tobin, which I just think is stunning. Um, it's very Ireland. It's very, like, very, very based in Ireland, very much based in Ireland. It's very Irish in the way it approaches a lot of things. It is a stunning book um, that weaves together sort of family drama, family history, sense of belonging. Um, there's a kind of queer storyline. It's, it's brilliant. I adore it. Actually, and also the couple from this book probably would also be a good one for the, uh, for the, the previous prompt. Um, they're a great couple in this book. Um, but as well as that book, a book I talk about a lot, Dinner Party of Tragedy by Sarah Gill Martin. Um, I think this book is stunning. Um, it is, uh, a lot of it's based in Dublin and it is just so pretty and gorgeous and heartbreaking as a book. And I, I really love it. Um, but I also want to sort of say sort of Anne Enright, um, her book, The Gathering is phenomenal. The actress I think is also fantastic. And I really want to read more of her books. Um, I have a real soft spot for Irish authors. I think there's something about the voice that they capture that um, for me is just so captivating and so lyrical and I have very, very rarely been let down by an Irish author. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of love um, for the men and this is a hard prompt for me. This is sort of like, you know, pick between your babies. <laughs> but like, very Sophie's Choice going on with this, but there we go. Next up is Say I'm Your Number One by Princess. So this is your favourite prize winning book. Surprise, surprise, I follow quite a few prizes and the uh, there are quite a few that could really work for this. Um, another one that also is sort of Northern Irish is uh, Milkman um, which uh, by Anna Burns, which I just think is phenomenal um, and is such a clever, brilliant, brilliant book um, in, in just so many ways. It's that it's so almost turgid at times. It's such a dense book. But actually, I think that is its power because there's so much going on in this woman's head um, as she navigates sort of various 
politics, both sort of national and international politics, sort of sexual politics, so, so many other things. It's brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not say um, the lovely Ducks Newburyport, uh, which won the Goldsmiths Prize alongside uh, something else. <laughs> it won some other prizes um, and is just is brilliant. I, uh, I, I really adore this book. But, you know, there are so many books that win prizes um, where you're like, oh, you know, I would have wanted someone else to win and some where you're like, this gave this book a chance to really shine and something like Milkman is that book for me um, that really just sort of was able to go and take on a new life because of it. Same for something like Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. Um, some brilliant, brilliant books. And obviously, of course, The Sea, The Sea by R.S. Murdoch, which I love and she is brilliant and I will never stop talking about that book. Okay, next up is The Harder I Try by Brother Beyond. And this is an author that you just can't get into. And uh, as much as I, you know, I'm willing to give a fair few authors quite a lot of chances and will happily read a few things by them. Um, but there are a couple of authors who I've really struggled with. Um, and the Booker Prize has often meant that I, you know, reading the Booker Prize shortlist has often meant that I come across some of these authors several times. Um, and for me, one of those is Will Self, unfortunately. I do find it a little bit hard to get into some of his work. Um, and it's frustrating because I also can kind of feel like there is definitely a book out there that will probably, I will like of his or really love. And, you know, I read a collection of his short stories, uh, Tough Tough Toys for Tough Tough Boys, I think it's called. Um, and there were some of those stories in there that I thought were exceptional and some that just made me want to punch myself in the face. So, I mean, I guess he's at least getting a, a strong reaction from me. So I guess, you know, job done. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's tricky because I... There's something about the tone of those books, even when I am very appreciative of something very clever going on, that just always leaves me a bit cold. And I have heard that there are some other good ones, and I know that there were some really great suggestions the last time I ranted about <laughs> Will Self, um, that uh, sort of sound like there might be more up my street. So maybe I'll give him a go, but I, um, yeah, he's not an author I'm necessarily rushing to go and check out brand new books from. Come on, baby, can't you see? Cause I'm guilty. Next up is Happening All Over Again by Lonnie Gordon. Um, and this is a prompt about your favourite series or sequel. Um, I've already mentioned the His Dark Materials series, which I adored. I also really enjoyed the Hunger Games series. I thought those were really good fun. I do sometimes find it a bit hard with series because I, I don't necessarily... Maybe I've got commitment issues. I don't know. <laughs> but like, I sometimes find it hard to really get into them. Like, yeah, I really loved the Wolf Hall trilogy. I thought that was really cool. Um, one that I'm going to put on here... Um, is one where I've not actually read the full uh, trilogy yet, but really am keen to. Um, and that's by Jared Woodward. Um, so he was shortlisted for the booker for um, the second book of that trilogy, um, I'll Go to Bed at Noon, which I just thought was so stunning in the way that it portrayed a family going through addiction and, and sort of facing many, many other things. Um, and I am really keen to check out August, the first book, um, and then the third book, the name of which escapes me right now, but I will display here, um, that I think just, they all just sound so brilliant. If they're anywhere near the quality of I'll Go To Bed At Noon, I'm going to love this as a series. So very, very excited for that. Next up is Toy Boy by Sinita. And this is a prompt about your favourite poet or poem. Um, so as at the time of filming, uh, the first thing that is really coming to mind is... Um, a poem called The Onion by, um, who is it called the, called the Valentine? The Onion or Valentine, either one, by Caroline Duffy, um, which is um, a gorgeous love poem talking about, uh, describing love as an onion, uh, which sounds a bit weird and cheesy, but actually really works um, because she sort of describes the sort of the, the punch of the flavour, like the strength of it and the way that you can break down an onion into these tiny little rings that you can wear. And it's so clever and it, it sort of exemplifies so much of why I love Caroline Duffy, just this real sort of physicality of her poems and this real imagination, um, but also this sort of daringness to sort of really go for it. And her collection, The World's Wife, um, is a collection that for me is just, you know, I studied it at school, I fell in love with it, rereading it as an adult uh, sort of later, I've absolutely, I still love it, I still think it's brilliant. So yeah, I would definitely go for her for that. 
Next up is uh, Together Forever um, by Rick Astley. And this is a book that has been on your TBR for the longest. Um, and two books really kind of come into that. Uh, one more actively, one more passively. So the sort of more passive one is Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell by Susanna Clark, which I, I, I think I genuinely got this paperback not long after it came out. Um, and that was over 10 years ago. So <laughs> it's it's been well, almost 20, no. 15 maybe? Oh, crikey. Anyway, it's been a long time and it's it's been sat on my shelf pretty much ever since and I keep on being like, yes, one day I'll, I'll come around to you. That'll happen I think next year, hopefully, or late this year. Um, and the next is um, kind of a slightly more active one. A friend of mine lent me this months ago and I keep on meaning to read it and uh, Eric Carl Anderson over at Lonesome Reader has so highly recommended this that I know that I will love it. It's just that like I actually need to sit down and do it and I, I have some holiday coming up soon and I might I might do it then or over Christmas. And that's Mrs. Engels uh, by Gavin McRae. Um, and this book I just think so, sounds so beautiful. The, the writing style sounds gorgeous as well. So I do think I will love it. I just need to actually sit down and do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and finally, um, the bonus track, uh, especially for you by Kylie and Jason. And this is where we recommend a book for Jen uh, that we think she might like. And um, I think the one I'm going to go for is again a book I probably speak about quite a lot, um, but I think is really fun. And that is The Beginning of Spring by Penelope Fitzgerald. I adore this book. I just think it's so beautiful and so lyrical, but also so funny and so clever. And I really think that um, Jennifer would love it. I also really highly, highly urge you to go and check out her channel. She is brilliant. Um, she's so insightful and just there's a real love for books that comes out in, in her videos and in the way she talks about things. And I, I just love it. And I, I, I think she's great. I think way more people need to go and check her out. So please do. Um, and on that note, I will tag a few people. So um, I'm going to tag uh, Low Shelf Esteem. Um, I think she's brilliant. I think you should all go check her out. She's really fun. Um, I also think that Larry, I've read Larry Has Opinions, would have some great opinions about this. And I also think Shelf Possessed would be really fun on this one as well. Uh, so do go and check them out. Uh, as well as uh, beating around the books, actually. Yeah, she's great. You go and check her out. She, I think, would have some really fun uh, thoughts on a lot of these prompts. So that has been me doing this tag. Um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on any books um, that you know or love from these, any things that you would sort of choose as your own prompts, and just generally other good pop songs <laughs> because it's getting dark outside and I think we all need the sort of serotonin boost um, uh, not serotonin for this, the, whatever it is, the, the sort of the boost that would come from flailing around uh, like a, an idiot in your room to some of these wonderful pop songs. I've been Bob um, doing the wonderful Jen, uh, Jennifer Loves Books tag. Uh, please do check her out and please if you want to do the tag yourself feel free, go for it. This is a democracy of some form. Go for it. Um, I've been Bob. Take care. Bye-bye.